Welcome to COVID Sense. The goal of this channel is to relay evidence in everyday language so that you can make informed decisions regarding COVID. Kaleidoscope Strategic, the research team behind COVID Sense, brings more than 50 years of experience preparing evidence-based reviews in the fast-paced world of oncology research. At the heart of good clinical decision-making is informed consent. Joining us is Deanna McLeod, Principal at Kaleidoscope Strategic, to tell us why informed consent is so important. Um, informed consent is a fundamental human right, and it's designed to protect people's autonomy, uh, to give them ability to be self-determined, uh, to protect their well-being. Ideally, what it's done is it's done in conjunction with uh, full facts on a treatment's benefits and risks. It's done in conjunction with uh, a qualified healthcare professional who understands the data, who's familiar with your particular treatment and health history, and is able to walk you through the process of figuring out whether this treatment is good for you. So I expect that certain climates are more conducive to supporting informed decision making. How is our current environment impacting things? Our uh, current environment is uh, presents some real challenges to inform consent. Um, I think one thing is COVID-19 is new um, and it's also scary. Basically, you know, it can cause severe disease. It's contagious. People who don't look sick might be able to spread it to you. Um, I think that uh, the other really crazy thing is that we're learning as we go. You know, what we knew at the beginning of the pandemic is different than what we learn now. Um, and, you know, the types of interventions that need to occur have to occur, occur at a societal level. So it's like public medicine now instead of private medicine. So lockdowns, masks, vaccines, these are all things that need coordinated action if we're going to deal with this thing. And so I think what that does is it, um, you know, presents uh, a climate where you know, we might be tempted to put social pressure on each other in order to get a certain outcome. Um, you know, it's also very intense. And so the media plays a role in, you know, sharing information. And a lot of the time it's narrative in the sense that it's about, you know, people, um, you know, getting th through very difficult things rather than focusing on evidence. Um, and it's nonstop, you know, whether it's on your phone or in the headlines, it's really hard to get away from some of this, this data. So what I think it does is it produces a climate of fear, which I think makes it challenging to make uh, good informed choices. Yeah, so there is a lot of confusion about what to do and whether we should be taking one course of action or another. How does this impact informed decision making? Yeah, so I think there's some factors that really facilitate informed decision making and then there's some harmful facctors. Things that facilitate it are basically access to evidence, um, open dialogue. It's not easy to figure out if something's going to be good for you or not and everybody's different and everybody's history is different and everybody's makeup is different. So there's quite a bit of sorting out to do uh, when you're doing an intervention. And I think you need to have access to informed medical professionals who can help guide you through the whole process. Some of the things that I think um, are apparent now with the pandemic are, you know, because things are changing so quickly, a lot of what we would normally rely on, which is published data, isn't available. You know, half of the vaccine trials at this point are not published, and so we really can't scrutinize them to figure out what the benefits and risks are. I think uh, there's some, some pressure that we put on each other, whether it's vaccine selfies or contests to try and encourage people towards vaccination. Um, and I think the censoring of medical professionals, um, there's been some pressure from colleges, you know, doctors or nurses to stay on narrative and to not talk about uh, things like risks fully because they could uh, impede people's participation in vaccination, for instance. So with this level of public health concern, it can be difficult to have a, make an informed decision. So is that why you created this channel? Yeah. So COVID Sense came to be because we saw that, you know, based on the fast pace of discovery, that it's very difficult to stay on top of all of the evidence and not, not very many people are equipped, not even clinicians at times, um, that uh, it needed to be organized and synthesized in a way that would allow people to have open dialogue around it. So ideally, this channel would be used in conjunction with a medical health care professional uh, and to walk through the data and walk through concerns and see how they intersect with your particular uh, treatment history and makeup. Um, and ultimately speaking between the two of those, 
uh, you can arrive at a, at a decision that is fully informed. That's how the idea of COVID sentence came to be. So the evidence in this field changes at a rapid pace. So if you found this helpful, make sure that you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell so you're notified of new videos as they're added.